Hey guys, Adam here with yet another video for you today. And in this video, this is actually going to be a continuation of the last video I did where we addressed uh, some issues with this base pod XT that I have. So if you didn't catch the last video, go ahead and check it out. In that video, I replaced all of the rotary encoders, these four rotary encoders here, because um, they were having you know intermittent issues, but they all seem to be working very well now. So anyway, um, I use this uh, live when I when I do live playing uh, at church. You know, every Sunday as part of the worship team, I play bass. Um, I really only use like four, three or four presets for a given set. Um, and there's like I don't know what there. I forget. I think there's like sixty or seventy, maybe even more presets. But I, but anyway, there's like typically three or four that I that I use. Um, and it's kind of a pain. I have this mounted on the amp, which is behind me. And so, you know, I'm kind of facing the crowd, and then I have to turn around and, and you know, change my preset and then go back. Um, so I wanted a quick and dirty way to just select between the four presets that I have. Also, you know, quickly tune if I need to and, and you know, do other little things here and there. What I found is that there's a whole slew of pedals that you can get from Line 6 that work with this pod, one of which is this guy right here. Uh, this is the FPV Express Mark II, and it is exactly what I'm looking for. It's got four pedals. It's got a built-in tuner. Um, it's even got a wah pedal that I can use as a wah pedal or a volume pedal. Um, so this is kind of exactly what I was looking for. It allows me just to quickly select between four presets um, on the fly, and it works really well. The problem is it's not working. And so just you, it just hooks up with a standard like Cat5 Ethernet cable here. And I have it plugged into the pod, um, but absolutely nothing is going on. So at first I thought, oh boy, you know, maybe there's something wrong with this. The seller assured me that it was fine. And so I wasn't sure what to do. Um, but I happened to see a deal online for, for this guy here, which is a Line 6 Pod XT. Not the base Pod XT, but just a normal Pod XT for guitar. And actually I just, just you know, for... for um, for kicks, I decided to pick up a you know a six string and just start playing it a little bit, and so I've kind of been tinkering without with that a little bit, um, and I figured that this would be fun, you know, make it make it a little more enjoyable. But anyway, as I plug this in into here, we'll find that where does it go up here on top? This guy starts working, so that tells me there's nothing wrong with the pedal; it's something with uh, the pod itself. And so I looked at the schematics. The only things that are really firing through this cable is, you know, uh, power and ground, and then transmit and receive. And so this is kind of a master, and this is a slave. It's sending some kind of communication back and forth. Um, so I'm hoping that it's just a power issue, something going on within the pod. But that's the goal of this video. Basically, crack this open. We'll take a look and see. Um, if anything stands out, we can use the multimeter and just kind of trace through a little bit and see if we can find out what's causing uh, this guy to not talk to that guy. All right, let's pop this guy open. Uh, pretty much the same as what I did in the last video. So this main board, for those who don't know, is actually the same exact main board that's in the, the non-base, the normal Line 6. In fact, when you look at some of the controls, you'll see that it says, you know, like reverb, uh, presence, and some other stuff. And then when you look at the actual shell of the case here, right, it doesn't say that. It says compress and channel volume. But if you look at the actual, the other guy here, the red one, you'll see it says reverb, presence, etc. So it's the same PCB. They just, you know, have different firmware for the base version. And I th actually think in the research that I've been doing, the base version was kind of an afterthought. A lot of the guys who play bass, they were really asking for, uh, you know, a set of um, uh, effects and everything that were uh, tailored specifically for the bass. But anyway, um, we'll just take a quick peek here at what's going on. So this is the this is the header right here, uh, right here for the pedal, and then it feeds into some very circuitry. And I actually have the schematics up here that we can take a look at. But just Actually, just now, looking at it, I can see that this guy here, whatever that is, let me bring it up closer so you guys can see it. Do you see how there's some brown, you know, almost like it's been burned a little bit? It's definitely had some some heat going on there. So that doesn't look good to me. It looks suspicious. What's it look like on the other side? Let's flip it over. Holy cow, can you guys see that? Let me flip it this way. There's something that happened here. 
Now I've read online that this is a normal Cat5 cable that you use to connect between the pedal and the unit here and some people have accidentally used a crossover cable which has some lines reversed and so if those lines happen to be power and ground lines and then bad things can happen so I almost wonder if that's what happened if the, the original owner accidentally used a crossover cable it could be but anyway let's take a look at the schematic since I have them here and we can see uh, what those components might be so this is the schematic for the pod base pod XT I think I have it on top you guys can probably see it there um, and it also covers I think the rack mounted versions of the pods so this schematic may be for that version um, but this, the schematics are the same the component you know notation may be a little bit different like you know this is you know, capacitor C6 maybe it's C22 and in, in, you know, in the other version who knows but this I'm sure is essentially the same so we've got our our jack here and it comes in through a whole series of inductors to the rest of the world if I had to guess I would say it's it's one of these inductors in fact if you look at it it's probably labeled L something is that true uh, let's see yes it is L22 and then the other guy here uh, where are we looks like that is L9 so I don't see an L9 I do see an L22 though right there which goes to boom 9 volts and so I think it's these inductors right here so let me see if I can source these you know I uh, through Mauser whatever that's typically what I use um, and then replace those and boy I, I would I'd be willing to bet that it's the fix is really that simple just pulling off some of these surface mount inductors and then replacing them so let me give that a go and then uh, we'll be right back alright so we got the PCB on the bench here let me move some coin up materials out of the way I think what I'm going to do is use my uh, little SMD workstation. So I actually have over in the corner here, uh, it's a SMD, you know, surface mount rework station. It really just blows hot air through a small nozzle and allows me to uh, remove surface mount stuff so I don't have to try to heat one side and then hurry up and heat the other side and go back and forth. Um, so we'll give that a go. I haven't used that tool in a long time, so it might be uh, nice to break it out again. Let me turn this thing on. And actually, before I go and do that, we like to use flux, right? That's my my MO. Use flux for everything. So I'll just do some flux on that side. And on the other side here. Where is it? So it's gonna be a little tight. Which may well hopefully it won't be a problem here. Um, and what I did is I just sourced these from Mauser. So these are you know surface mount. Uh, ferrite beads inductors they look to be about the same size and so let's just pull these off and see if we can put the new ones on so let's turn this on and get some tweezers and that is definitely hot Get underneath this cord here. Hold on one second. There we go. Okay. It's holding on by a thread here. Actually, it looks like the trace got lifted up there. That's not good. Starting to heat up now, though. Here we go. Yeah, so let me take a look at that because it looked like the trace might might have lifted up there, which is probably just due to the stress of the original issue when it heated up. Let me grab something like this where I can take a look here. Where am I? Yeah, see this lifted up, see that? So hopefully that won't be a problem. I'll just keep it in place there. But yeah, that's not good. Tell you what, let me clean this up with some some braid. Do I have any of that stuff? Yeah, I got plenty of that stuff kicking around here. So now I'm just going to use some copper braid to uh, clean up my mess that was left there. So just some copper braid. And let me get the uh, soldering iron. 
working here. All right. Let's get the iron and just see if we can clean up some of this mess here. That looks pretty good right there. Let me just do a smidge more maybe on this guy. Very nice. So, that looks good to me. So, let's flip this guy over and get the other one. Now, the other one's kind of tricky. It's way in the back there. I'm almost wondering if, if I should risk it with the hot air, if it'll get too close to that. Hmm. Let me try... Well, let's just try it. Or should I? Boy, I'm wondering if I should even attempt it to get... I, I just don't want to melt this thing, you know? Um, you know what? Let me try the braid. Let me just slip some braid back there. Maybe I can just do it that way. Let me set it down like this so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Maybe I can kind of just pitch this down a little bit. Yeah, that's better. You guys can kind of see what I'm attempting here. If I can slip the braid in between... Let me clip this off then I can uh, maybe get enough of it off to where I can just pull it out. It's also going to be a tight squeeze with the iron anyway, but we'll see. Get that right in there. That's pretty good. Yeah, I can already feel it lifting up, so that's good. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Get that out of there. Nice. Pull this, clean this up a little bit. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. That looks nice. So let's go ahead and lay down the new ones. And what I typically do is I'll just put a little tiny bit of solder on one side. That way I can um, tack it down. How do I want to do this so you guys can see it? Uh, let's do it this way. Make sure you guys can kind of see that. And so I usually throw down a little bit of solder on one side, and then I put the, uh, the SMD component, whatever it is, capacitor, inductor, resistor, uh, throw it down, tack on one side, and then tack on the other side. Yeah, that's a little better. All right, uh, where am I? Grab one of these guys, and let's see if I can just plop them right down in place. There we go. And we'll do the other side here. This is a little bit of a tricky spot to get into with the camera in front of me. I'll give it a go. This is very tricky, actually. I don't want to make sure I do this the right way, so. Put it like this. Zoop. That's better. Something like that. Actually, now that I can see this, I'd like to move this over if I can. It's going to be tricky to do. Let's try this one. Here we go. Side. Beautiful. That should be just fine. Alright, let's flip this over and do the other side. So, same game plan on this side. We'll tack this half down. There we go. And grab our inductor here. There's plenty of room to work, so it should go much smoother if, he, if I can hold on to the thing. There we go. This whole, this whole thing is rocking back and forth. Let me throw something down on this. <laughs> Make my life a little easier. Here we go. All right, let's try this again. Grab this little guy. Perfect. And... Done. 
Beautiful. How's that look? Not too bad. All right, so that being said, I guess that's it. I'm going to put it in its shell. I probably won't secure the whole thing down. Let me zoom out so that it doesn't look so crazy here. Um, I'll just kind of put it, you know, give it power or whatever, um, and plug it in and see if it's a success. And if it is, then we can go ahead and button her up. Okay, so we got the main PCB here. Let's give it a go. Let's turn it on and make sure that it is indeed on, and it is. And let me just see what I'm getting for voltage here. Uh, because I'm supposed to be getting around 8 volts. And so let me just take a look and see if we look at the header pins here. I think it's 3 over in this direction and 2 over if I'm not mistaken. That is 7 volts. Alright, well now it's dipping into 6. That's not good. It should be 8 volts. Interesting. Okay, well, uh, just for kicks, let me plug in the cable anyway and see if there's any life in my pedal. So we'll go ahead and plug this in and glance over here and sadly there's no life in the pedal. Okay, well let's turn this off. I don't want to leave this on for too long because um, the case itself is actually the heat shield for the power regulator that sends the 8 volts to the um, to the pedal. So this is the 8 volt regulator. You can see it's marked right there, 8 volts. And you can see that it's got this this long spacer here. The whole shield, the back cover, which is metal, mounts onto that and acts as the heat seat. So I don't heat, heat sink. I don't leave it on too long. Let me just take a look and see if I missed anything. I mean, those inductors were definitely toast. And so replacing them was a good idea. Let me just make sure that my work is legit here. That looks good. Oh. Oh, look at that. Let's see if I can get you in frame here. Do you see that? Q1. Q1 is toast. Yeah, okay. What is Q1? So I actually found the uh, schematics for the mobile version, if you will, the handheld version of the pod. I, I was mistaken. I thought that the other version was kind of an all-encompassing one. It really was just the schematics for the rack version. But I managed to find the, the version of the schematics for the, uh, for the handheld, which is what I have. And so let's just zoom in a little bit on the uh, schematic portion for the pedal output. And so as we saw earlier, what did we just replace? We replaced L22 and L9. Those were these inductors here for power and ground, which was good. That was the right thing to do. Those things were toast and they were definitely a problem. Q1 is this guy sitting right here in the path between our 8 volts and the header. And so this guy, if this guy is toast, then that would totally explain why... Uh, we're not seeing the right voltage here, and so I wish I'd known that earlier because I had I had sent out an order and got these. If I had known there was also an issue with this, I would have done it all at the same time. So now I got to put another order out for this one, and so as I'm doing that, I think I'm also going to include these few guys here uh, because if I replace this and then realize later on that this also got fried when this guy got taken out, then I don't want to have to place another order. So we're talking pennies here for this stuff. So. I think I'm just going to source this section right here, um, and then that way, if I need to, I can replace you know this entire section. But we'll start with this guy when the parts come in, and then we can go from there. So let me place an order, and then we'll be back. Okay, so this is a few weeks into the future. I've had other things going on and had to wait for these parts to come in. But um, I think we're going to start with replacing Q1 which is this guy right here, and you can see he is the guy that's kind of toast. Uh, the package is actually burned, you can see. The rest of these components, like the transistor here, I'm sorry, that's the diode, uh, the resistors and, and whatnot, those look to be in fine shape to me. And so, and like we saw in the schematics, this is the, this is the guy that uh, the main 8 volts flows through to go to the header. And so these are the new ones. I always order extra, right? So you don't want to order one in case you lose it or you screw up your soldering job or whatever. So, you know, this is a few pennies, and so uh, I always order more than one just in case I botch the first one, then I've got another part that I can use. So anyway, let me get the, um, let me get uh, the hot air reflow um, gun working here. And of course, my first step is to always hit this with flux. And so that's what we're gonna do here. And now let's fire this guy up. 
take a little while for it to warm up. Alright, I think we're at temperature now. So we're just going to heat this up. Try to get my uh, hand out of the way so you can see it. Look at the way my hand's shaking. <laughs> early in the morning, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but man, my hand's going nuts here. Come on. Doesn't seem to want to be letting go here. like almost at temperature. I wonder if I gotta increase the temperature of this a little bit. I hadn't had problems in the past. Let me do that. Let me just turn the tempo a smidge here. Where are we at now? Let's try that. Maybe I'm just not hitting it with a, enough heat here. Oh, okay. So it's starting to let go. You know what? It's like, I think I just lifted up half the package. Half the package came up, and the other half is still down there. That's weird. I might just have to scrape it off or something. Tell you what, let me, uh, let me switch gears here. Let's go back to the normal soldering iron. And I can probably just push away whatever debris and stuff. I'll use the solder bra uh, braid and we'll clean this up. Alright, let me try the uh, the normal iron here and just see if there's anything I can do to get rid of the rest of this. There we go. Just remove all that stuff. Alright, let me use the the braid here to clean up our pads. There we go, that's looking a little better. Just do this last one here. Alright. So I think we're in good shape. I just see a little bit of remnants of some solder there. I don't want to get anything between the pads. Okay, so let me lay down a little bit of solder on each pad. And then we can lay down our new MOSFET. I'm sorry, I had to adjust the camera there. I keep losing focus for some reason. Anyway, let's uh, lay down some new flux on our pads. And I'm just going to throw some solder down on one pad to kind of secure the part. I'll just pick the one closest to me. Perfect. So now the trick is to try to align this my shaky hand here. That looks pretty good. Alright, let me just take a look from the side here. I think that looks pretty good. So, let me secure the other pads. There's that one. I want to make sure it's down there. All right. All right, I'm not going to replace all the other components just yet. Um, that guy is our likely um, culprit, so I'm feeling pretty confident that that's going to take care of the issue. So let's go bring it over to the desk. Uh, I'm not going to bolt it back in, you know, to the, to the case just yet. Um, I'll just plug her in, plug in the pedal, and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, so I got my pod sitting here on my desk. I have the pedal board off to the right on the floor there, as you can see. So... Let us turn this on and see what we see. Oh, I see. Oh, I did see lights. Oh, I see something. Okay, let's see where we're at. Again, one of these knobs is a little iffy. Uh, 10A, so theoretically I should be able to do 10B, 10C, 10D. Awesome. Uh, what else? 
Yeah, I don't think the volume registers on here, but I mean, it looks like it's talking to each other. Um, what else, what else, what else? If I hold the lip switch for a while, it should activate the tuner. And there's my tuner. Okay. And then tap any lit switch for the tempo. And I think that will register here. Like tap, you can see there's nothing going on. But if I think if I go like tap, 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 tap. I'm not seeing anything going on there. Oh, okay. So maybe in that setting A, there wasn't an effect that used the tempo of the given song. But B looks like it does. You can see here it's tap, tap, tap. So let me tap it a few times faster. Tap, 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 tap. You can see there, it's much faster. So yeah, so I call this a success. Yeah, this is great. So I'll just go ahead and button this up off camera. Um, but yeah, I think that will do it for this video. So if you guys own uh, a pod uh, and are having issues communicating to the pedal, you know, chances are sometime in its history, maybe somebody plugged in the wrong cable or, or there was a short perhaps in the pedal, who knows? Um, but if you're getting a dead pedal, um, then maybe it's, maybe it's this, maybe it was the issue that we saw today. So anyway, I think that'll do it for this video, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching and subscribing. And aside from that, God bless, and we'll catch you on the next one.